Well, hello there. This is episode one of my series on taking an existing game and building it in Pin Builder. And uh, I should mention this is a redo of the first episode. In the first episode, I went over a lot of features uh, with Pin Builder. Uh, the thing is, is that Pin Builder's had a an update or two since then and a lot of the features have uh, kind of changed a little bit so I just decided instead when I needed to redo this ep episode one um, that we'll just talk about 8-Ball and uh, as new features show up with Pin Builder with, with more updates uh, we'll just go over to, uh, them then and see how it, it would relate to this design. Um, in case you're wondering, if you saw the original episode one, um, I've had a I had a lot of uh, microphone problems and a lot of headphone problems. People couldn't hear me and everything uh, else. So I've already replaced episode two, and now I'm replacing episode one, and uh, with a far better quality for the microphone and everything else. So uh, I'm I hope people bear with me. I'm pretty new to doing streaming, so. You know, we all make mistakes, especially at the very beginning. And we shouldn't be afraid to make uh, to make mistakes. That's how we learn. And I did learn. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this is 8-Ball. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty much like the original design. Um, there ha but it does present a couple of very interesting challenges. Um, Bally, you, uh, Bally produced 8-Ball in 1977. Um, it was a very successful game for them. They sold over 20,000 of them. And uh, one of the biggest reasons is this is the very first Bally game to use solid state displays instead of the old drum reel system that was used in electromechanical games. In fact, this is the second solid state game ever, uh, ever produced. The first was, um, I believe it was called Spirit of 76, and it wasn't a good game. Um, this one isn't all actually all that much better. Um, it does present some challenges and most importantly the bonus counting system is kind of really weird with uh, 8-Ball. In fact I believe it's the only time they actually ever use this kind of a bonus counting system and I really don't see Pin Builder ever supporting that. It's, it was quite literally it was just a one-off. The other thing, uh, the other thing about about it is, is that we do not have support for uh, advanced scoring yet um, it, it will probably become be coming soon at the moment pin builder is still pretty much an infant um, for scoring uh, it's just one score um, so every time a ball comes down the, uh, and hits the switch here it will just score five, uh, 500 points or a thousand points or whatever you set it but that's it all right, yeah, you can't do an advanced scoring system in which you can assign a different value to each letter, uh, to each light, and then have it say just triggered with one trigger. That more than likely is going to be coming real, real soon. Um, they are going to probably start concentrate more on the logic mode, which is uh, Pin Builder's biggest feature, and that's the ability to do scoring without actually having to do any coding whatsoever. It's, uh, as it is, it's very, very simple, uh, but it's also, you know, very, very limited at the moment, but there'll be more and more scoring uh, coming in, um, as time comes on. At the moment, as you can see, you can do just points. You can do a, add a bonus and have a bonus counter. You have a bonus multiplier, extra ball special. That's pretty much it. But with an advancing score system, uh, that will really open up uh, Pin Builder uh, for your logic and for your own set of rules. And especially considering that just about every machine in the last 60 years uh, uses at least one form of advancing score and some games have like six or seven different variations on it and if uh, and as soon as that comes in uh, we'll really be playing with gas when it comes to uh, uh, pin builder won't we because we'll be able to do a whole bunch of uh, brand new things now as I mentioned before um, in, in all intents and purposes, we won't be able to do any of the kind of scoring that was that's with 8-Ball for a while. Uh, so we might as well 
make some changes. Um, I chose eight balls specifically because it's one of the most easiest tables to do. And if you're learning something brand new, like I am with Pin Builder, keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible for your first table. Don't try to get too complex. You, um, if you don't know the system, you're gonna you might end up getting a little frustrated because you're trying to do too much. And just keep it nice and simple. And as you can see, I've already pretty much built all of the obs, all of the main objects in the table. The table does play. It does work. Um, it doesn't really score anything, but you know, so far so good. Um, I've been adjusting how uh, the game plays as I've been going along. It is sort of a, uh, an EM type game, so it should play a little bit slower. Um, but with the new update, I've noticed that uh, the physics have um, gotten a, a little bit better too as well. The, the ball seems to be a, a lot less bouncier and it doesn't seem to float on the table as much as it did before. Um, so, you know, we can take advantage of that, and especially with the rules and how we, de we design. So, we've got the table built, now we have to think about what we're going to do with it, and exactly uh, the kind of rules. And uh, with the knowledge that 8-ball eight, eight itself is probably one of the most coma-inducing things to play, uh, we can actually make some changes. This is one of the nice things about uh, Pin Builder is, is that you can change things. If you don't like something in an actual game, change it. I mean, you know, you're not actually stuck um, to the game itself. You're not stuck to the design. You're not stuck to the rules. You can make your version of 8-Ball anything you want. So, and so let's uh, really concentrate on the more... Um, important things and that's well first off making it exciting to play and since we do not have a, a lot of things we do have though is the example games and the example games that come with pin builder do have some additional features and the first thing that i noticed with eight ball and then in comparison uh well with the firepower clone that they uh that they put in um uh, Star Destroyer uh, is it has a kickback and boy oh boy does this game ever scream for a kickback doesn't it right there yep that's where it is um, so that's pretty simple uh, we're going to need to decide w uh, what we want with an object and you think the most natural one is this square target right here um, if you look very carefully, you can see in the text that it actually lights um, the break shot lane, which is down there, and a spinner. And, but I think maybe that we might want to give us uh, a new option. And I was thinking that, uh, that we could, in fact, put a little target right here and a couple of little posts, just like Bally used to do it. And it would fit the design very well. Uh, we all know the fact that it has a kickback, which is a Williams feature and didn't show up until about three years later. But, you know, I, I'm sure people will forgive me. The other thing is, is these two side targets, they get a little boring after a while. Um, maybe we can, uh, we can, we have room to put a, uh, a single drop target in front of it. And then that way we can use both of these lights. And same over here. Um, we might have room to do a kicker here too as well. We don't have to change, uh, we don't have to keep the design exactly the way it is. And it's just graphics that would need to be changed. That's pretty easy to do in Photoshop. So you don't have to worry about it. The one change that I have made is, Bally has the worst drain lanes of all of the manufacturers. I mean, look at the size of that thing. I, I, I point this out a couple of times uh, in, in the next few videos, but yeah, it, 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 the drain lanes are very bad. So um, what I've done um, to prevent that is I, I put in a couple of, of, of uh, mini posts in here. And normally the ball would just come in. Well, let's just use this guy. And... Uh, it would just pretty much hit that and just go straight into the drain lane. And it wasn't terribly exciting to look. So what I did was I added a couple of, of posts. So if the ball comes in, it actually bounces around and it gives the player time to re 
react and it actually uh, promotes a little bit of tension to the uh, in the player um, and that's something that that's actually a very small little trick that the designers have been doing for 70 years uh, you know uh, increasing the tension of the uh, of the player and, and, and making him uh, a little bit nervous about losing the ball and oddly enough two pegs and the ball bouncing around in there will do just that if you notice I did this uh, I set this up in height mode the modern style the peg uh, center is in fact even with the screw here in the post and uh, so I actually uh, pulled it back a little bit that opens up a little bit more room which means that the ball will bounce a little bit more makes it a little bit tougher it also gives the player a little bit more time to nudge if he needs to so that's the reason for that and on this side, I would really like to put, uh, I, w I guess we're going to have to see how Pin Builder actually handles a, a kickback system, uh, especially if you got rubbers on the side. I am very used to future pinball and previously visual pinball. Um, you don't have a post here. You have a, like a, um, a wire form uh, because if you have a post, uh, sometimes, the, most of the time, the kickback wouldn't even work. Feature wouldn't even work in in future pinball because of that. But we'll we'll see how it is with uh, pin builder. Um, if you looked at at my previous videos, you will see that I've actually changed the rail. I put this back to a metal wire. It was a metal wire uh, for some strange reason, and I suspect it's steam uh, cloud steam cloud loaded in a slightly older version. Um, so uh, I've replaced it back uh, with this. If you notice something here too as well, you can just see it. It's just sort of overhanging just a little bit here. Uh, I really hate games that has the ball coming down. It comes down the lane. It rolls down this wire. It hits the very end of the flipper and it goes Buck! like that. I really, really hate that, and I can't help but notice that the developer of this game did, it probably does, because this is exactly what he did too as well. And yeah, you only notice it if you really look for it, uh, but boy, oh boy, does the ball play a lot better because of that. Other than that, there isn't really much to talk about. We're going to go over the new rules. Once an advanced scoring system comes in, this is just pretty much going to stay the same. Um, look at the scores. The scores are fine. Multiply. We can do the multi. Uh, we can do the multipliers. Uh, but honestly, I think what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to do points. And you know, 10, 20, 30, extra ball special, maybe a 50,000 shot pretty much a standard uh, advanced scoring uh, feature. Um, I believe I may actually use this target to land, uh, to do the bank shot lanes and, and we'll see if uh, Pin Builder has an alter, uh, alternating light system that's perfect for that and I'll be removing all of the multipliers and I'm just going to do a traditional uh, light all four of these lanes and you get a multiplier and I think uh, that will work out a, a little bit better um, I've noticed that there is a lane change feature in pin builder that you can do so we'll probably do that as a lane change this guy I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with him um, it pretty much has to stay a target if you put a kicker in there the ball is just going to hit the, uh, the bumper bumper and just go into there so you know maybe we'll just leave it like that and beyond that we'll, we'll pretty much keep the same I'll uh, probably do the drop target idea for the for the front of these I'll probably add a center target um, I really don't want to add too much more to that. It, it's a very, very basic design. So we should really keep it as such. And then of course, I'm going to have to redo the graphics for this. Um, if you've noticed, I haven't done the plastics uh, for the top that go over the top of this. Um, a, because um, they're kind of a pain in the neck to do right now. And B, I, while I design stuff, I always do the plastics last. I make sure I've got all of my scoring going, uh, my bulbs are all, all, all going properly, um, anything that would be hidden underneath there, 
Um, the thing I've noticed with pin builders, unlike uh, Visual Pinball and Future Pinball, it has no layer support, and that means that it makes it very, very tough to, to select items uh, that are underneath a plastic. So do the plastics last, and then you can just do the graphics. I'll probably keep it a pull theme at least. I might just reuse the graphics. Uh, I really don't see any changes in, in the shapes of the plastics. I, uh, so I can, in all intents and purposes, just make an eight ball part two kind of table. And I think people would uh, uh, will like that. So that's some of my ideas that I, I am going to do. Uh, I hope you go through the rest of the series and uh, explore the game and how to use Pin Builder with me as I learn and as I do new things. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to sign off. Episode 2 and Episode 3 are already up uh, as I'm doing this. As I said, this is a complete redo um, of episode one because of the mic problems so uh it'll be very so if you uh have a, a quick look at those two as well you, you'll see that the, there has been some changes to pin builder and even a couple changes to uh uh to the program after i recorded those two episodes so have fun and uh hope to see you as part of the community soon and in the meanwhile, happy pinball.